Hey guys, it's Jason here, Old Car Auto Guy. We are back at the shop. We're going to try and fix bubbles tonight. Stay tuned. <laughs> Jason and this is Old Car Auto Guy. Today we are working on Project Bubbles and we're trying to figure out what the heck is going on with this blowing fuse issue. So as you know from previous videos we've been having troubles with the uh, 40 amp fuse uh, that was in the fuse box just like this one blowing um, and losing my dash lights, my radio and my heater controls. So over the last couple of times that it's been blowing I've just been replacing the fuse uh, but the last time the uh, fuse blew, it melted the fuse so bad that I had a hard time getting it off of the wires and the wires here are in pretty rough shape. So we're going to test, we're going to fix the problem as far as the melted wires go, put new connectors on it, but we're also going to make sure that we've got the right two wires kind of connected together and we'll get into that in just a second. So first thing we're going to do is get the uh, fuse panel apart so that we can get underneath and make sure that none of the wires down there are melted that could create a bigger problem down the road. So with the key in the run position and the fuse disconnected here, this wire coming out of the fuse panel should be the only live wire because what it will do is it'll send power back to these two wires here. One of them is for a blow a motor and I assume the other one is for dash lights and radio. So let's make sure that this has power. And it does. So therefore, this one here should not have any power to it, which it does not. So let's take a look and see what's going on in here. So we'll get our pack of patented fuse holder out of the way. Before we haul that fuse box out, there's something that I want to show you. So you can see right here where everything was melted on that end where it plugged in to the other side of the fuse. But if we look down here where these two makeshift wires adapt, there's no corrosion, there's no melting there at all. So right where the fuse is seems to be where the problem is, but it's got to be grounding out somewhere. So we're going to start poking some test leads once we get the uh, fuse box upside down. So as you can see, a lot of green dust down there, that's from our previous repair. I really don't see anything out of the norm besides the green dust. And that, like I said, that's from our previous repair and doesn't really have anything to do with what we're looking at here. As we inspect this wire, which is the one that goes back to the radio and to the fuse bot or to the blower motor, I look down here and the only thing that I might be concerned about is that those two wires when made live might have been rubbing up against something on the ground. You see that scratch right below where the light's shining? I'm wondering if that couldn't be from one of those tongs on the side of that plug-in right there. So I think what we're going to do is we've got to replace this wire here anyway. So I'm going to make a new Y and then we're also going to clean this up and uh, make sure that those two connectors aren't touching each other or the body of the vehicle. That's about the only thing that I can find from here that's giving us trouble. So did I create my own problem when I did the original fix? Yeah, probably. But we aren't 100% sure that this is a problem either so what I'm going to do is clean that up. I'm going to make that new wire up and see if we can't eliminate at least that as part of the issue. So let's go make some wires. So basically what we've got to do is we've got to make one of those and we're going to remake one of those. I don't have any white wire left to match what's already in there so we're just going to use some red. So there we have our new wires made up so let's go get them plugged in. So we've got each of those connectors wrapped. We're going to wrap them together now. Good thing I don't swear. There's 
one. So what these little tabs here are supposed to do is they're supposed to go down and hook into a threaded piece in the center of those plugins and pull everything tight. But you gotta get them started first. White one. Slip it up in there. With a little bit of luck, that should just snap right back into place. A little bit of luck and some light. starts clicking again. Okay, so if we take this wire here, and if I can remember which one is alive, and I think it's the outside one, yep. So we're going to take this and we're going to plug it in to that. Right there, which means this should now be live, which it is. And Well, poopy. I ain't gonna fit up over there with those cases on. Son of a biscuit. Well. Crap. I just have to get out the bleeder. Now this one's not live, so I can cut it here. There's one, and this one is live, so we're gonna unplug it. And look at that, not even bleeding. If I plug that in there, and this in the other side, I should hear my blower motor going inside. Yep. Which is perfect. Now I'm gonna cover this up so you guys can't see this because I'm gonna patent this idea, the zip tie, so you just uh, kinda do your own thing there for a minute while I zip this up. Anywho. I guess we will have to uh, wait and see what happens with this over the next week or so. See what happens. If I can get away with uh, just replacing the green fuse here every time it blows without burning the car down, well, that might just be what I have to do for the rest of the winter. So I know that some of these issues, although some might be self-induced, um, aren't probably what you guys want to be watching on this channel. but. Uh, redoing those wires, at least we have a place to start. We looked back and we saw a spot that could have been a problem. We fixed that. We know that that may have been a problem. Not sure if that's the problem or not, but uh, we're going to try it out, 
for a week or so, see what happens, see how long it takes to blow that fuse and periodically we'll be checking on it to see what happens. Now, when I posted about the problems that I was having uh, in, in the last video, a few people have reached out uh, that felt maybe there was a few things that I could check and, and, and then I have done that. And uh, Steve Fast at Hammerdown Motorsports, if you don't watch him, he's trying to get the 10,000 subscribers. Guys, I'll put his information right here so you can head over there and take a look at his channel. You won't be disappointed. Steve had asked when was the problem occurring or when would it get hot type of thing if the blower motor was at high speed or if it was at certain speeds and to check the blower motor resistor. So um, off camera a few minutes ago, I did check the blower motor resistor and it is operating at all three speeds. And when I took it apart, it didn't look like there was any uh, resistors gone in that little board. Uh, and most of the time you can tell when they go bad. But I really appreciate you guys, you know, coming up with some ideas and, ask, and getting me to check things that I may not have checked in the past because when it comes to 12 volt wiring, I am not an expert by any means, especially on a lot of this newer technology car. One good thing about this Kia is that it still uses a lot of the basic rudimentary uh, wiring for the, um, for the blower motor and all that stuff. There is one piece in there that I don't know really what it does and it looks like it's a small little relay and uh, we had that apart in one other video uh, when we first had the problem and it's just a little points thing so i am going to uh, take a look at that if this problem persists and see if maybe the points aren't sticking because if they're sticking they're going to draw an awful lot more uh, current through them wires and uh, give us the problem uh, potentially that we're having so guys thanks so much for tuning in and watching me through the struggles of bubbles in fact that's going to be the title of this video, I think. Struggles with Bubbles. Anyways, I appreciate you sticking with me through all these videos and on our quest to get to 1,000 subscribers. That contest is still on. If we can get there by January 31st, uh, I'm going to give away $1,000. You have to be a subscriber to be a part of that contest. So if you haven't done so already, I'll encourage you to go down and hit that red subscribe button and bell notification so that Every time I put up a new video, you can see what's going on with Old Car Auto Guy. Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts and hoodies are available at the first link in the description box below if you guys want to get your very own prices are very reasonable. Lots of colors to choose from and lots of sizes to fit every need. You too could be out sporting Old Car Auto Guy merch and that helps support the channel as well. So guys, I'm going to ask just one more thing. Get up out of your chair, go to the fridge. Grab a nice tall glass of milk. Chug that sucker back till you get yourself a milk mustache. And just as you're coming back to resume this video, smash that friggin' like button. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God best. Let's do it again in the next one.